once again, uh, we need some auxiliary uh, tools for understanding or for dealing with variational principles, which are the concept of functionals. You know, you already know what is a function, right? You know that the function is just a, 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 just a function u that uh, just for every uh, member of the uh, original set, uh, for instance, the interval a, b, gets a member of the image set, which is in this case of reals, right? That's what we call a function, and we can construct infinite sets of functions, right? So we know a function as a mapping that goes from a certain interval in 1D or from a certain original set in, in Rn to uh, another set in Rm, for instance. Okay, so what is a functional? Well, just to be short, a functional is a function of functions. So imagine that here, that here we have all possible functions. We want a space which is not a function or an interval. It's just a set of functions. Every member of this space is a different function. Okay? So now we do a mapping in which every, uh, to every of these functions, we just map to a number, a real number. <coughs> so it's a function, so to speak, in which the argument of a function, instead of being a number, is a function. Okay? Examples. That. Imagine that I take the integral from A to B of u of x. What is the result of that? A real number, okay? So the, the, the image of u of x is that integral, okay? Or imagine that I take a certain function of x, u of x, u prime of x, for instance. Everything depends on u. When I integrate that in a certain interval, then the result, what is the result of this integral? What is that result? A real number. So then for that u, the image, for that function u, the image is r, okay? That's what is a functional. In that case, the functional is integral over a, b, and u, x, differential of x. Or, in that case, the integral of a function of x, u, x, u prime x. When we do the integral, x disappears. So the only theoretical argument that remains is what is the function u. That is what is a functional. A function of functions. A mapping of all a certain set calligraph x of functions to the reals and this set is given what this f stands for the, the, the functional which could be that or could be that or could be that depending on what you so we can construct any functional any mapping okay so that's the first concept okay so now in the same way that when we take functions we can get derivatives of functions okay you know what is a function, a mapping, and you can take derivatives. We know that the partial or total derivative of a function. So when you have a functional, what is the equivalence? Well, the equivalence is a derivative too, but in that case, it's a little more complex, but finally, at the end of the day, it's really similar, which is called the Gateau derivative. So for functions, we define derivatives. For, uh, sorry, for functions, we define derivatives. For functionals, we define Gateau derivatives. And how do we construct the Gateau derivative? Look, that's the way. We consider the original function of space. Now, the original space, it's not a function, but a function of functions. So a set of functions. All functions, u, that go from a certain omega in R3 to a certain R, m, okay? Okay, then, uh, then define a functional that takes elements of this function of space, so all elements of this function of space, and we select what kind of functional we do, and that is what we call a functional. For every of them, we obtain a real number. So if the functional, sorry, if the functional is that, taking an u, we obtain a number, or if the functional is that, taking a u, we have a real number after the integral, and if the functional is that, taking, uh, uh, given a u, we obtain after the operation a real number. So that is what we do, okay, that's the functional. And now imagine, what about if we consider, instead of being the, uh, the, the element of the function aspect u, we perturb, we do a perturbation of this function, okay? So imagine that we consider a perturbation direction, eta, and we construct a different u, u plus epsilon times eta, okay? 
u plus epsilon n, epsilon being a scalar, a scalar number, which can be, we'll see that finally we make epsilon 10 to 0. So that's a perturbation. Why? Imagine that we have, in our case, the displacement as a function, right? So we have, the, the, that is the original function, the displacement, that for every point of omega, for every point of omega, we obtain a value in R3 or in R2, depending on the, on the dimension of the solution, we obtain the components of the displacement u. That's the function, okay? So that is the, the placement of the object of the, of the body at the reference configuration. That's the placement at the reference t. What about in our perturbed u? So consider a perturbation of u. Not in a point, look, not in a point, in all points, okay? So, but this perturbation in all points has the shape of a given function, epsilon or eta of x, times epsilon. Epsilon, what is then eta? Eta is like a direction of perturbation. And epsilon is the intensity of this perturbation, right? So that is what we call a perturbation, okay? So now we just insert, can compute the functional, not for u, but for the perturbed view, u plus epsilon eta of x, okay? And then, if we do that, once we do that, since the return of that is a function, because you no, know, it's a real number, now we'll have a real number for every epsilon. So if we take epsilon equal three, that result would be after replacing u plus epsilon eta in the functional, we'll obtain a, a, a real number. If we place a different epsilon, another real number. So finally, this is a function of epsilon, which can be differentiated with respect to epsilon. And to that differential, we just evaluate this differential, this, this, uh, the, uh, dif uh, this differentiation for epsilon equal to zero. So in other words, what is the, in the, the, the meaning of the Gateau derivative? It means, it, it explains how much the functional varies when I perturb the function, in the functional, in a certain direction, but in an infinitesimal, in a very small perturbation, when epsilon tends to zero, okay? When epsilon tends to zero, the perturbation is so small, but, of course, that there is some dif difference, and that is what is the uh, Gato derivative. So it's the, the, in other words, is the variation, the Gato derivative, is the variation of a function at a certain function u, when we take the argument a certain function u, but in a certain direction in a certain direction, okay? The direction given by eta. That is the physical meaning of, of, the, of the Gato derivative. For instance, imagine that they have a body, uh, let's see, in a body, omega, right, in a, in a boundary, uh, or the, the boundary of the body, so let, let's imagine that we have uh, that functional. Integral over omega of phi of u plus the integral on the boundary omega of of uh, phi of u, phi capital phi is small, okay? So, uh, what happens if I change u and by a perturbation of that, u plus epsilon, plus eta epsilon, right? So, when I do at this eta epsilon, uh, this, uh, the direction uh, eta, many times, I didn't mention that, is replaced by delta u. It's called that direction, eta, the direction of perturbation is called delta u. It has to be differentiated for differential of u. So we are used to, to the word differential of u. What is differential of u and of a function and a small increment of a function? That is not. Why is not? It's an increment, right? It's a variation, it's a perturbation. But the difference is that it's not a small. It's not necessarily small. What makes it a small is one multiplied by epsilon and make epsilon tend to zero. But eta is not a small, okay? So many times, whenever we, we, we compute the Gato derivatives at a certain point in a certain direction, in a certain way, we, we will say the Gato derivative will express as delta f. The point u is what is the function at which we are computing the variation and eta is the direction of this perturbation, okay? And many times, as you will see, instead of calling eta that perturbation, we'll call it, we'll call it delta u, okay? Uh, delta u then will stand by a variation of the function 
at which we are computing the uh, derivative. Okay, so let's consider that this is a function, and then I will comp try to compute the Gato derivative of this function and on that direction. So I do the rule, I just replace the, the argument u plus u plus epsilon delta u, delta u the perturbation, I take the derivative with respect to epsilon for epsilon equal to zero, and by doing the, you just can have a look onto that, by doing that in detail, you see that the, f the, the way of doing that is relatively easy. Look, the final result of all that, that's not very difficult to, to, to analyze, is that the variation, the, the Gato derivative of f in the direction delta u is just obtained by derivative of phi with respect to u times delta u, that, plus that derivative with respect to u times delta u. So finally, at the end of the day, the way of the oper operational way of that is just oper operating as we were differentiating. So what we do, would we do is just, we have to differentiate that. We do the differential of the derivative of phi with respect to u times differential of u, right? And if we differentiated that, what do we have? Differential of phi with respect to u times differential of u. Well, these are not differentials, but these are like differentials. The, the way of doing is just, if I want to take the directional derivative of phi in the respect of de delta u, the only thing I have to do is just skip the integrals, differential like the kernels in terms of u times delta u, delta u being not the differential, but the perturbation direction, and that is the result. That is the way of calculating uh, Gato differential. So at the end of the day, not so difficult. Okay. Well, now we have what is the uh, concept of functional, or what is and what is the concept of derivative of functionals, Gato derivatives, right? By the way, there is just a remark that has to be done. The perturbations that define the Gato derivatives have to make that the pertur perturbed u plus epsilon delta u has to belong to the original function space. What does that mean? That, for instance, if the, function, the, the functions space that we know, that we introduce, have some limitations, for instance, in our case, it's very common in so think of solids. In a solid problem, we have a domain, and that domain can have a gamma u boundary condition. So a condition where the displacements are prescribed, okay? So what does that mean? That when we perturb the displacements, we have to make that this condition is fulfilled both in the original and in the perturbed, okay? So in other words, we can change delta u, delta u is different from zero everywhere excepting at here. Because otherwise, if we make delta u different from zero here, then u plus delta u, u plus delta u wouldn't fulfill the condition, the boundary condition, okay? So, in other words, when we think of a Gato derivative, that's important, when we think of a derivative, a Gato derivative, and we think of a perturbation, that perturbation can be any, the one that we want, right? Accepting that at the points where the function has some prescriptions, some displacement prescriptions, where a gamma u, that perturbation has to be zero, okay? In order to keep consistency of the perturbed function belonging to the same space than the original function, okay? So, so this is a little remark that whenever we have two perturbed in order to do Gato derivatives, a certain functional, the uh, variations, the perturbation at the, the part of the boundary where the, the function, the original function is prescribed, those variations only at those points, not the remaining points, have to be zero. Okay. So now, um, let's consider a functional, f, and in the general form, let's consider that uh, we are, for instance, a solid mechanics problem, where we have a certain domain, omega or v, whatever we want to, to, want to call it, we where we have a boundary uh, gamma u where we have displacements prescribed, a boundary uh, gamma sigma where we have the tractions prescribed, okay? So we consider that domain, omega, and then we construct a functional, whatever it is, as an integral over omega of something 
to make it general, imagine that this something is a function of x, of the function u, the displacement, and the gradient of displacement. This is approaching to our problem because, you know, in our problem, the gradient of displacement, what, what does it provide? Strange, right? So in any case, you see that in our problems, we are dealing with displacements and gradient of displacement. So let's consider that setting here, but also a several integral, look, that's something here, on gamma sigma, not on gamma u. So on the part that we have prescribed tractions, this part here, we consider another function of, of x, u dx, and gradient of u. So let's consider this family of functionals. The functionals that for every possible displacement of the, of the points of the, our continuum medium, we have a certain integral over the domain and or the integral over the, the boundary of the domain where we have prescribed the stresses, and this returning a real number, a, a, a number and a scalar, and that being the, the image of the functional, f of u. Okay. So imagine that then we do just the variation, the Gato derivative of f, that's called it delta f, in the direction delta u. I recall the delta u doesn't stand for the total perturbation, but the direction of perturbation, okay? And we do the ways, and so we have to evaluate every u changed by u plus epsilon uh, delta u, and then take the derivative at the limit epsilon equal to zero. So after doing all that, imagine that doing the operation, we obtain an, an expression like that, an integral over omega of something, another functional, e of x, u, x, gradient of u, and another functional, gamma sigma, t, and with the kernel is t of x, u, x, gradient of u. So, and that is the most important part. That is very, a very important concept in physics, in mechanics, and so this, this differential of f is uh, something which is the integral of something times delta u, integral integrated on omega, plus the integral of something t times delta u, okay? And imagine that, uh, of course, we can do that for every delta u. We can do that, that variation for every perturbation, right? So delta u can be any, but with a prescription. Delta u, the perturbation, has to be zero at the part of the boundary where we had prescription in the displacement. So delta u is equal to zero, right? So that, uh, for instance, in the example that we have seen before, in that example that we have seen here, in that example that we have seen, uh, no, here, uh, here, okay? So that was the functional, and that was the Gato derivative of the functional. So what multiplies in the integral delta u? That, that would stand, that is what would stand for the e, that part here is what stands for this e. And that part here that multiplies on the boundary, that would stand for t. So imagine that whenever we do a, the, a Gato derivative of a functional, we always obtain an integral like that, something that multiplies by the perturbation direction integrated on omega plus something else that multiplies the perturbation dimension direction integrated on the gamma sigma. Why gamma u doesn't appear here? Because look, de delta u is zero on gamma u. So I, even I could, that, I could do that all the boundary, but of course the integral of that in gamma u, since delta u is equal to zero, disappears. Right? Okay. 